Hello, my name is Simon Bingham and this is part of my video series on Junos and authentication. Um, so I've already completed a video where I discussed how to use classes and um, I'll cover that in a second, but how you can create user classes so you can create, you know, say for example, not users or advanced users or super users that can access different parts of the command line interface. But in, in when we were doing that, we were really we were really always authenticating the user locally. locally. That means that the, the, the passwords and the credentials that um, the, the user will determine, you know, on 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 the switch or on the router itself, as whether you could log in or not. But that doesn't really scale to to many devices. If you have, you know, say hundreds of networking devices, um, you really don't want to be configuring hundreds and hundreds of passwords and try and keep them all synced up, particularly when you have different classes of users or different user different usernames. So there is a solution for this, and it's called Radius. Um, the radius itself is an, an, an acronym which um, goes back to the days of dial-up services. I think it's remote authentication and dial-in user services. What it really means, though, is it's a system by which you can determine um, whether someone's authorized and what they can do or not do. Um, in fact, most radius um, services dovetail into things like Active Directory and 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 that as well. So, in effect, you can say, you know, has has Simon left the company? If he has, he's been removed from Active Directory, therefore he can't access the switches any anymore. So it's a basically a centralised way of, um, of 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 administering your your users. So um, now the 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 switch configuration of this is actually quite simple. Um, but in practice, getting this working, the difficult uh, the difficulties are always on the back end. So probably one of the most common radius servers being in use, I think, in enterprise networks is actually probably Microsoft uh, 2008. Um, I think they've got a network services. I've never configured it myself. Um, but I, I don't want to get into configuring all that because that's not what we're interested in. This is really a, 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 a Juniper video. So what I've done is I've I've created a radius server called some using something called I said actually an old a Juniper product called a steel belted radius or Funk steel belted radius and it's a fairly basic radius server you can well I say fairly basic it's you know it's a it's good radius server I believe it's used in a service provider and buyer environments so if you Google um, some something like Funk steel belted radius um, it will come up for you so and so if we do, uh, yeah. So you can download this this from Juniper, and you can get a thirty day thirty day trial version of it. Now, also, if you Google Junos, and um, I think it's something like I don't know, um, Junos Radius Certification, and maybe Funk Radius, Silberto Radius, um, you might possibly find this document. This is um, written by this gentleman here, Stephen Gill. It's 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 exactly what you need. Just just getting the basics working. Um, without going too much into you know, all the possible options and every variation. So, how does it work? Well, you try to authenticate to this device and it then forwards your credentials via an authentication protocol to a radius server and the radius server then feeds some values back saying either they're called um, return list attributes. So, um, the radius server will check, check your username and pa password. It also check, can check things called check list attributes. Um, so, for example, you could be, I don't know, this person is only allowed log, to log into this IP, IP address or something like that. You can check. I'll, I'll show it all anyway in, in actually happening. And then there's what's called return list attributes, where you can return values from the Radius server to the to the device that yourself that you're trying to authenticate to. So that could be, and actually what you can do in this case is you can say, for example, it could be allow commands or deny commands on, 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 on a Juniper. So you can hold that centrally on a radio server, and you can say, "Okay, this, these this guys allow commands or or or, or deny, deny commands." So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go on and, and just demo this and, and talk talk through it as a demo. It so um, let's bring up the config we're going to be using today. So this is the config that I'm going to be using. Um, we will go ahead and configure this on my EX series switch and see if we can log in. Let me just talk you through this. It's all under the edit system um, stanza. And don't confuse this with 802.2.1x and radius, which actually holds its details elsewhere. So 802.2.1x is completely different to this. So um, if you have already have some experience, you're thinking, oh, I'm, I haven't already heard of, heard of this. But um, in fact, Genos does it in a quite a logical way. Because really, we're talking about authenticating your management access to the to the device here. So, without further ado, I'm gonna I'm gonna configure configure this device. So let's do configure edit system 
accept authentication uh, authentication order let's do radius and then password let's do set radius server 172.27.152 oops .233.152 Now it might be quite important oh, damn it I made a mistake there look that worked now now it's quite important to set your um, source address um, because um, that's how you configure you configure the devices the authenticators here on the, on on the radius server which I'll show in a minute so it needs to know your source address stays the same so in my case it doesn't matter because I'm on a layer 2 connection to a radius server um, but but in, in most cases you know if you're going across the routed network you need to define the source address so then we need to define the the users or well this is in fact the name that it's going to get back so let me just show you so let's do um, set login user I'm going to call him I've got something set up already called a uh, full dash admin I'm going to put in the class super user super user remember is a predefined class on Junipers that gives you access to everything so let's commit commit this and then let me just show you quickly the the radius server because it is actually interesting to see what's happening here so this is the administrator for still belted radius now what you have to do you have to configure the devices that you're going to be you know they're going to be sending this auth authentication information so in the case here I've defined my Juniper um, my Juniper switch already okay now if you have a look in here you have to define the IP address it's coming that's the IP address it's going to be coming from that's what I was talking about the source, source address is quite important and you configure a shared secret which I use the word secret if you recall so that's that so I've also configured some users, right? Now I've got a user here, that I don't worry about that one, but I've got a user here called test, right? So this user is going to have to log in and I've already pre-configured the pass name to be the password to be test as well. But what is important here is this isn't the username that's used to log into the device itself. This is the username that's checked on the day database. In this return list here, under Juniper local name, is actually the username that it's going to send back to the box saying this guy is full admin. Right, and if you remember on on the box, what I configured was that full admin is a super user. So I hope that's not too much of one go. But now you can also, if you want, you can add in here things like the I think you can do yeah, Juniper allow commands and Juniper um, deny commands and various bits and bobs. You can um, you can do tunnel ID. You can set VLANs. Um, you can also set the uh, firewall filters. So there's a lot of things you can do as soon as you sort of open this Pandora's box if you like you suddenly realize it's worth probably worth some of the pain because you can do quite a lot with it. Um, what I'm also going to do while this is happening I'm going to fire up Wireshark just crash them by the looks of it but I'll we'll just fire Wireshark up again and we'll, we'll, we'll just get this to capture everything while this is going on. Now personally I find all the pain here is in setting up this, is in setting up the the you know the radius server itself because there's various different authentication pro pro protocols you could be using and you know that's that's the bit that's complex here not really the Juniper aspect so let's just do capture interfaces um, for now I'll just be lazy and capture all of them right now let's just do radius right So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to log into my switch and we should see it trying to send these details to radius server. So let's see if this works. Uh, so what I need to, I need to manually um, type in the IP address because otherwise it will try and, in the case of what I'm doing here, it will try and log in as a root user. So let's just put this up here. Right. And let's try and log into, um, I can remember the IP address of my um, switch. I'm going to log into 172.27.233.214. See if we can go into that. Oh, it's prompting me. Right, that's a good sign. All right, test and test, and we're in. Fantastic news. Right, and oh, now we can see. 
So we can see here, it's, I just find Wireshark's the best place to see this. Um, you can see that the there was an access request and there was an access accept. And if we even dig down into in, into, into this, we can see that. Um, Let's have a look at the reply packet. You can see some of the bits of information that went back and forward here. Let's have a look. Uh, let's have a look at that. Value of attribute pairs. You can see uh, let's have a look. the vendor specific attri attributes. And look, there it is, full admin. That's what I was really looking for. Look, you can see it's sending the full admin, the Juniper VSA, the so vendor specific attribute. So this is actually the vendor, vendor specific attributes is really powerful actually because you'll find that then you can send all sorts of information back to the switch based on a, cent, a central day database. As I said it could be a firewall filter saying you know I don't know only allow this person to you know go somewhere or do something. So that's 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 pretty powerful. I'm not you know it's not really within my scope here to do all that stuff because really it's fairly simple. Um, you know the switch side is fairly simple. You, you, you know the um, the co more complex bit is trying to. Um, uh, really trying to configure, configure the radio server and, and the best best place for that is that link link that I showed just there so okay that's it really um, that's working and you can see we've got a centralized database now determining who can who can who can do what just to prove I'm not making this up let's uh, quickly just go cloning new window actually I'm going to, have to do a new session one two dot twenty seven dot three 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 dot two one four Blah, 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 blah. We can see it all been denied here, and you can see the access reject coming from the radio server back to the switch. Okay, thank you, and that's it from me.